नमस्कार व्यूअर्स हेलो एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टीवी आई एम टीना झा योर वाचिंग पर्सपेक्टिव द रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया हैज हाइड द रेपो रेट बाय अनदर 25 बेसिस पॉइंट्स टेकिंग इट टू 6.5% अनाउंसिंग द बाय मंथली मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी ऑन वेडनेसडे आरबीआई गवर्नर शक्तिकांत दास सेड द मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी कमेटी बाय अ मेजॉरिटी डिसाइडेड टू रेज द पॉलिसी रेपो रेट बाय 25 बेसिस पॉइंट्स नाउ दिस इज द 6th टाइम इंटरेस्ट रेट हैज बीन हाइक्ड बाय द आरबीआई सिंस मई लास्ट ईयर taking the total quantum of hike to 250 basis points the central bank also projected india's economic growth at 6.4% for 2324 broadly in line with the estimate of the economic survey which was tabled in parliament last week the economic survey 2022-23 projected a baseline gdp growth of 6.5% in real terms for the next fiscal so we'll decode the main points of the monetary policy review presented by the reserve bank of india with eminent panelists joining us on the broadcast Please to welcome in the studio Mr. Shubhamoy Bhattacharjee consulting editor the business standard and joining us virtually is uh, Dr. Ashok K Nag former advisor Reserve Bank of India Professor Charan Singh CEO Egro Foundation thank you gentlemen for joining us on the broadcast today uh, coming to you first uh, Mr. Bhattacharjee was this on expected lines another hike by 25 basis points or does it come as a surprise given the softening inflation in the country well the two members of the committee didn't come as a i mean it wasn't expected they sort of were pumping for the fact that it should be uh, the reserve bank should finish its uh, interest rate rising trail for this episode so definitely to that extent you would think that there would be a section of the market which would have also thinking that possibly rbi would take a pause why were they thinking so because the finance minister's budget on 1st february has been exactly what the economy needed it's been very hard on fiscal consolidation and it has done exactly what was necessary for rbi to feel confident that the supply of excess money in the economy is coming down so so there was a possibility on the other hand what rbi's majority opinion has held is that while inflation is coming down it's still not really a continuous downward flow especially what uh, the governor pointed out that the core inflation which is basically inflation minus food and fuel is still above 6% which is the rbi's tolerance range of 2 to 6% if that is the case then rbi would say that let me be erring on the side of caution and make it a bit more costly for everybody around to play around with cash so therefore i would go on for this thing and again given that um, the global uncertainty is not something that you can pencil in nobody knows which way and a war will happen right covid for instance was another thing i mean how do you pencil in that sort of disasters you really can't so with given that sort of uncertainty and we have had 3 years of that sort of things it's better that the central bank is saying just as many of the other central banks are saying that let's be a bit more cautious on the flow of liquidity to raise it the raise the cost a bit more and hold on a bit so on the rbi's cautious approach before i go to uh, mr nag uh, professor singh coming to you first there was of course a lot of hope that the rbi would pause this uh, you know uh, cycle of rate hikes now that uh, it has not happened what according to you are some of the most significant impacts in the in the times to come see uh, i myself was expecting that there will be a pause and uh, egro does the shadow monetary policy as you know and there also this was debated heavily and the, the market perception was that this is not the time for pause and therefore even within the shadow there was a view it should be increased the market was also of the view that it should increase by 25 basis point now one thing is clear not only in rbi if you heard the fed reserve chairman he also has raised it by 25 basis point but the view point both the language of our governor and the language which the fed reserve was making their fed chairman is similar they want to anchor the expectations and they feel that anchoring the expectations is better for the growth prospects and better for the economy now given that fact that they want to anchor the expectations they gave the reason why and very rightly said by the pre- previous speaker that the core inflation is high and even if you look at the projections which are being made for the year even the headline 
core inflation, of course, has mentioned 6.1%, which is beyond the 4 plus minus 2. But even if you look at the inflation, which is for the whole year, that's also going to be little high. It's expected to be 6.5%. So obviously, when we are going to be, uh, when we are projecting that the inflation is still not, even the headline is not coming within, within the range, this has to happen. The inflationary expectations which have been done for the next year, they are also, uh, of course, they're a little, uh, little more green, 5.3%, and the RBA has given for all the four quarters how they see it. So my own feeling is that the tightening that is continuing will anchor inflationary expectations, mm -hmm. that is for sure. Will it impact growth? which was one of the arguments that people who were saying there should be a pause should, um, and for that reason, it should be a pause, would it impact growth? The way the governor argued, and the way he mentioned that the prospects in days to come, and I think he's very right. He has discussed the global uncertainties. He has discussed the domestic uncertainty. He has also said that as of now, the pressure on the oil prices pressure on commodity prices could increase, and therefore he does not want to let go of the hood. The last point I want to make is that the finance minister also continued exactly in the same tone when they did the fiscal consolidation. They did the fiscal consolidation saying that we are following the long-term trend analysis and not using the option of difficult global and domestic conditions or let him use the purse. I think the governor has done the same. What is this going to do? This is going to generate lots of confidence that the Reserve Bank of India, who has been given the mandate by the government, is following it in letter and spirit and not letting it go premature. This is the image it is sent to the market, to the global market, global analyst, and I think, in a way, uh, they still have space. Probably next time they may go for a pause in inflation behaves. Otherwise, the message is clear, both to industry, both to the analysts, that the government and the RPI are here to anchor expe inflation expectations and keep it within the band and control it, which is okay, which is good in a sense. Okay. Dr. Nag, coming to you for your perspective, so does this concern around core inflation mean that, uh, you know, uh, the RBI governor is in uh, no mood to actually declare an innings when it comes to this uh, uh, cycle of hiking interest rates? The fact that now that there are expectations that perhaps this could be the last one, but uh, it's sort of a, a mixed uh, reaction and, and the kind of communication that comes across from the RBI governor there seems to be no clear-cut answer to that. It is quite uh, market was expecting that there will be a moderate hike of 25 basis point, and it does not be light. It has done that, as Charun Singh also told. See, what was market was expecting also, that the, the whether RBI will change its focus from withdrawal of accommodation to at least a neutral stance, which was not there. In fact, as uh, you can see the my policy document, uh, the statement of the MPC, that the two econ uh, outside economists, uh, of course, Sashank Kabide, agreed with the RBI's own uh, uh, internal economists, including the, uh, and the governor, that these, uh, the stance could have been changed. But RBI has not changed the stance that he says that they remain, want to remain focused on the withdrawal of accommodation. No. This is one point of these things. Now, question is that, the one is the code inflations, okay? That is the code inflations, according to the code inflations, if you look at these two things, you have to look at it. If the economy is getting heated up or economy is also having a problem of a kind of a growth slackening over the 23-24. The RBI GDP projections, DLG production, if you see that, the entire GDP projections for the next four quarters are 23-24, 20, uh, uh, are all basically is a, around five, uh, it come down to uh, lastly is a 5.1 uh, to 5.6. That is not a very high projections, given that the kind of two things we must understand that 
the uh, projects uh, the, uh, when fed is doing the same thing of the things at that point there is no risk of recession no risk of the job loss much of a job loss in usa usa job market is quite steady at this point of time but in the and the inflation expectation anchoring will not hurt the your you want to call the real growth of these things mm -hmm. question in the rbi is that that we have got a statement of fiscal considerations from the finance minister so one source of your liquidity insert in, in uh, injection in the economy is the fiscal deficit that fiscal deficit is reduced that source of the liquidity uh, uh, you know the budging of the of the equity is somewhat restricted in that sense the only thing i can feel that why rbi could not change the focus of things is not the domestic kind of a thing it is the international kind of thing because if you look at the uh, uh, the rbi is saying that the the impact of the your the outside the particularly in the exchange rate that is the point is completely uh, i think uh, in the mind of the rbi governor at the things that they do not want to have a, any kind of a free flow out, uh, 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 i mean rise okay the problem is that i believe and that is also their economic theory that you have a policy of the or you call the uh, uh, liquidity uh, i mean cost of the fund to the banking sector by the repo and repo rate or the and that way you would like to carve the liquidity in the market so that it, your inflation anchoring is can be done but that policy it did not be the single instrument which can also manage your exchange rate that is a different dynamics in fact there is a very in, in, uh, in a interesting theory by tin bargain that with one policy instrument you can have a multiple kind of objectives so i believe that the maybe rbi is, because rbi on the when you say the core inflation there is a one thing i could not understand that like the pass through of input cost to output prices especially in service could continue to extra exert pressure on the inflation core inflation it is very difficult to understand for me how the input cost on the price services particularly the service cost increase it has increased very much for the covid 19 at that period okay because of the various kind of supply shocks in transport or anything like that but i do not think that that will be a service cut input by price pass through will be so important right. for that taking a decision that we cannot change the accommodation today certainly if we are not changing the accommodation today we'll come we'll come back to that aspect in just a bit there are several aspects that you were spoken you spoken about and i'll take them one by one with the other panelists as well uh you know uh, mr bhattacharji and something that i've been reading about uh, through the day also ever since the rbi governor's press conference something that dr nag also spoke about a lot of economists are saying that it's a missed opportunity on the change of stance perhaps by the rbi they were expecting uh, the rbi to you know go to a neutral stance that has not happened was there a case and if that has not happened for the benefit of us and our viewers if you could explain why the rbi has you know uh, chosen to maintain with the stance that it had been and it didn't go to neutral going to neutral well um, you know it would have i mean frankly speaking there are far too many things happening in the world for rbi to take a neutral position now uh so that that that's the biggest problem right of course you can't pencil in those risks but those risks are there so these are like un, unpredictable risk you know you can't you can fathom the risk you can take the risk of something happening which you know these are like all over the place and that's too much happening all over the world to actually you know sort of think of them in any coherent structure that's one problem so at that time at that sort of a position what rbi is basically saying is essentially at the lower end of the pyramid people need money at low rates of interest to be able to pursue uh, their activities and remember a rate of interest is actually today much more significant for the people in the lower income group than tax breaks so income tax break happens to the middle class but that's a small group but even the poorest today and i have i mean i've been traveling across uh, some of the poorest districts of bihar they take out loans and they are taking out loans in fabulous numbers the ticket size is small but there are large number of them so what's happening and all of them depend on whether the rate of interest is high or low because that affects whether they'll be able to pay back so yes there is a very strong case for rates of interest to be soft so that they can uh, get on with 
what they're trying to do. The, when we talk about startups, when you talk about entrepreneurship, that's actually the India which needs financial support. So the soft interest rate helps a lot. But despite that, the problem is, while they need that, the other side of the wicket is that there is an inflation. If RBI lets go at this stage, then the very same things that they're trying to buy to create their business will be costlier. So which one do you take risks about? Well, RBI has said that I factor in that I'm going to put in lots of you know, soft interest rates issues to the microfinance institutions and others, but I won't let the general price rise come to hurt them because general price rise is a tax on the poorest, the inflation. So that is something much more worse. And that is the reason why RBI said, let me actually try to do justice in the way I can manage the best, which is that I still keep the cost of money high so that there's no inflation seeping into the market and try to break, create breakers for the poorer guys by creating inflation, by creating interest rate hedges, something which has also been endorsed in the finance minister's budget speech. She talked about giving interest subventions and others, which the government of India regularly gives. And fiscal consolidation, as you pointed out, helps. So that is about the best that we can do at this stage. Uh, if we do something else, it's risk. All right. Mr. Bhattacharji, I have lots of questions on what the borrowers should actually do. How is this going to impact them in just a bit? But before that, uh, let me go across to uh, Professor Singh once again, because he has a completely different perspective on the entire relation between monetary tightening and inflation decline. Uh, Professor Singh, I've been going through your uh, Twitter threads and something that I found very interesting and which I would like you to uh, you know, dwell deeper into for us and our viewers is, you argue there is no macroeconomic narrative that established a, co a causal relation between monetary tightening and inflation decline. So which means by raising interest rates, uh, uh, inflation can't be tamed. So give us the basis of this argument and how do you explain that there is actually no relation between the two? So thank you very much for uh, asking me this question. I was a little hesitant about bringing it out here because it's in debate with the economist which is taking place extensively. If you look up these studies by Lawrence Ball, Professor at Johns Hopkins, or if you look up other studies, they clearly show you that inflation targeting approach, which was adopted, really didn't work. When we speak about the great moderation of prices, which Governor spoke in his speech today, there, are, there is a debate. Was it because of inflation targeting, or was the general price, li price level not rising? So countries which adopted inflation targeting and focused on it using the interest rate hammer and keeping it under control, their inflation was X. And those countries which did not do inflation targeting and did not hammer using the instrument of interest rates, their inflation was also X. So there's a beautiful study by Lawrence Paul, um, which depicts that. My, my own research at uh, IM Bangalore, there's a working paper where I said probably inflation targeting approach may not work and the moderation of prices takes place across. Now the argument, this is theoretical argument and empirical evidence which I've discussed earlier. Most of the research that talks about the relationship comes from Milton Friedman where he said inflation everywhere is a monetary phenomenon and it comes from the quantity equation which shows that MV is equal to PY. The argument that some people like me are making that the inflationary impact or the inflationary rise that is happening across the world, including India, is happening because of the supply chain. If there is a war in Russia, Ukraine, and oil prices are getting impacted because of geopolitics, wheat has got impacted, fertilizers, metals have got impacted. If there was COVID and the monopoly production was in China and everything was centered in China, suddenly supply side was disrupted. What will the monetary policy through interest rates do in curbing inflation? Because prices are rising, because there is a commodity problem, there's a supply side problem, and there's a war going on. Now, if you look at the Fed Reserve Chief speaking recently, when they did a 25 basis point, the point he makes is, again, when there is a war, but then I think we are a large economy and we can control prices within our own. They have aggressively raised the interest rates. They're going to go in for a recession, man-made recession, a difficult recession. Inflation has yet not been tamed. 
And if you look at his interaction at the Economics Club Washington just yesterday, which is less than 12, 12 hours back, you will see that he's again arguing that till in the whole of 23, he will not be able to bring prices down to 2%. That is their target. And he says it will spill over into 24. But those countries are rich countries. They can afford to have a bad sacrifice ratio, but they can support people through the uh, unemployment allowances. The argument that I was making, which is there on my website and some of us are making is, when there is a supply side challenge, using the sledgehammer of interest rates, which impacts everyone, may slow down growth and will impact the wider segment of the society, poor people, but will not impact inflation. So the intention that is that the poor man does not suffer inflation, but using the sledgehammer of interest rate can cause unemployment to them. So the poor man again suffers at that. You know, that's a very interesting perspective, Dr. Nag. You've been, uh, you know, you've served as former advisor to the RBI. Where do you stand on this argument of there being little or no causal relationship between monetary tightening and uh, inflation decline? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, there, there under certain very stringent conditions, you can say that it can happen. But there is, I mean, this particular, uh, you know, approach to the you know, monetary policy where only... Uh, you know, inflation and uh, interest rate uh, changes uh, can be brought about. Because like what Mr. Charan Singh told, the supply chain is a very important part of it. If the supply shocks are happening substantially, then the interest rate changes cannot really be affecting them. In fact, if you look at this RBI, set, if you read the MPC statement, they are saying that risk is coming because of the way that countries can be worse or something else. That can happen any, any year. That cannot be justification for your interest rate uh, kind of a policy changes. The point is that I don't think that Reserve Bank is, does not understand this. What essentially they are writing this here, there that they are looking at this in cost uh, and coding inflation and cost of this uh, in production thing. Basically, I believe that it is a kind of a form, uh, international kind of a force space, international kind of a, uh, you know, the positions of the uh, country vis-a-vis -vis, uh, other entire, uh, you know, the export, import, in the exchange rate, all these things, your international debt, all these issues are there. That is more important role is playing in this interest rate changes in sync with the what is happening in the developed countries. Okay, because you know we are not really completely uh, delinked from them. So it is not necessarily that only for the Indian conditions of the, your, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, my uh, real sector, uh, growth or growth because we did not have that much. That clearly growth. explains the hawkish approach of the RBI governor, uh, you know, but the silver lining may be that inflation is moderating. But Mr. Bhattacharji, the, the immediate impact on people like us, especially those who are paying loans, is going to be significant immediately because the EMIs are going to go up. So if I may ask you, uh, what should the, uh, the borrowers do now? So for example, maybe, you know, I am uh, paying up a home loan. What should be my best option? Should I go up for you know, increasing my EMIs? Should I look at decreasing the tenure? What is the best way to go about? First of all, a 25 <laughs> basis point hike doesn't translate into But it's been consistent. It's been consistent. Exactly. So what has happened is the banks have more or less run the gamut of raising the costs, the home loan rates. I don't expect the 25 basis point today to actually make the banks start doing it. I mean, the direction was very clear. So the banks, in any case, were correcting those. Uh, so, so, so I don't see any particular reason for the home loan rates to really shoot through the roof because of this one. Uh, and especially knowing that this is about the last one in this current uh, uh, series, the next, I mean, there's going, definitely going to be pause very soon and, uh, and down middle, end of the year, you definitely see reversal. So definitely for banks, it becomes very peculiar to try to sort of, you know, factor in, to, to try to create a package where they raise it now and then again, six, seven months down the line, they sort of unwind it. That's one. Uh, I am also not very sure whether the um, inflation rate hike was because of, uh, our, I mean, will not work because we can't understand the supply shocks. I think supply shocks from global, that's happening. But there's a lot of supply problems that is coming in within India and that can fully be fully measured. And that is what RBI is looking at. And that's driven by pricing inflation. 
So definitely there is a challenge there which RBI is looking up to. The supply shocks of the pandemic have largely sorted out and those are not the ones which are actually holding up, you know, major uh, sort of uh, ad adjustments in the world economy. Uh, so, so, so I think that, that's something that the RBI has really realized that it's not just that which is leading to, because of which, so therefore you shouldn't raise the prices because after all, what, after all, what will prices change, do anything when the supply is not coming? So I don't think that argument is really there anymore. Uh, also, uh, that point, I qu quite agree with that point that if RBI doesn't raise rates, what happens is the exchange rate of the rupee vis-a-vis -vis the other currencies will be hit. We are talking about inflows of money. Uh, December, retail investments into the stock market has actually flattened out. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was uh, temporary, I, we, we would think. But remember, now, unlike a bank deposit, retail investment, like any other investment into stock market, is very fickle. It goes up and down with even the slightest change in rates and other things. Since last year, excepting for a couple of companies, Indian stock markets didn't yield very good returns. You know, it was sort of flat. So people actually went out in December. Now, that's a new phenomenon in Indian markets, and it's a new phenomenon in Indian savings behavior. There's a huge, as the NSC data shows, there's a massive number of Indians, retail, who are investing in the stock market. And for those stock market people, it makes a lot of difference whether the interest rates are actually behaving in tandem with what's happening globally. You can't have funny things happening there. So RBI is actually being very, not just being conservative, but also being rational, looking at that there's a large percentage of Indians now investing in the stock markets. And it's retail investors with very small tickets. You don't want risks there to happen. So therefore, it's fairly consistent about what the RBI is trying to do. So let's hope that, you know, RBI will signal a change in stance in the next meeting, uh, when the next meeting happens in the first week of April. With that hope, I'll have to wind up the program. Time, is, the time allows me to take up only that much on this edition of Perspective today. Thank you, Professor Singh, Dr. Nag and Mr. Bhattacharji for, uh, you know, joining us on the program and taking us through, uh, in fact, decoding all the important aspects, the highlights of the monetary policy review. Uh, that having been said, I'll have to wind up the program. Thank you once again to your viewers as well for your time. I'll see you same time tomorrow now. Take good care of yourselves. Keep watching. Sunset.